It's good to see everybody here today. Thank you for your time of praise and worship. And man, you sounded like people that were serious. Amen. You sounded like you meant it and you were actually uh, enjoying it. So that's, man, I know that is exactly what God wanted to hear from you this morning. And God bless you and thank you for joining in with us today. I want to remind you very quickly of our Immerse Conference coming up uh, in March, uh, March 27th and 28th. In your bulletin out right now, there is a, on the front side, there is a complete schedule for the whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Saturday night. And on the back side is an actual breakout sessions. Those are all the breakouts that we're going to be having. So uh, we've got some great teachers coming from our, from, from our area. Uh, that'll be coming in and teaching on those, the breakouts, and uh, you'll get to choose uh, one of each one of those sections each time, and so I want to encourage you to begin to pray over that and pray for everyone that's going to be coming and everyone that's going to be uh, teaching and leading and, and putting all this together. I know my staff has done a great job. We've been working together to put this all uh, the way God had led us to do it, and I'm looking forward to it want to remind you, though, that if you decide, hey, the conference just that, that Saturday, I, I don't know that I can do, we still want you to come Friday night and Saturday night for those revival services. I promise you, you're going to be blessed uh, through those as well. So we're excited about what God is going to be doing at the end of our month. But today we're going to be looking at getting people to Jesus, getting people to Jesus. And before we continue on, I want to have our kids, this is an opportunity for me to get to be with the kids again today. It is the first Sunday of the month. So, guys and girls, if y'all come on down, kids, come on down, join me here uh, for our uh, for time together. Yeah, come on. Now, in the first service, man, they were running. They were down here. I guess y'all aren't quite as excited about me, huh? Well, that's all right. I'm excited about you. So, come on down and let's have a seat. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. All right, how are y'all doing? Good, good, good. Well, listen, I want I want to talk to you today about invitation. Inviting people to things, in, inviting them to what we're doing. And I remember when I was a kid, and I was about some of y'all's age, really young, there was a movie that came out that, that when it came on TV, we, I got to watch, and it was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. All right? Now, I really liked Willy Wonka. Now, I know they've done an updated version of it, but I haven't watched that one because I'll be honest with you, the guy that played Willy Wonka kind of freaks me out a little bit. And I, I, I just wasn't interested. I like the old guy. And so I remember watching it, and the whole premise to the show was Willy Wonka wanted to get people to come into his chocolate shop where he made all of his candies, and he would only invite five people. And so what he did was he invented what he called the golden ticket, and he took five golden tickets, and he put them in candy bars, and he sent them around the world. And then he made the announcement that if you get a golden ticket, you get to have come over to my place and we'll go through the whole chocolate factory and let you take a tour of it. And everybody was excited, man. They got crazy. And man, it showed, the movie showed people buying cases and cases of candy bars, hoping they would get the ticket. They were opening up packets and throwing away the chocolate. Can you believe it? Throwing away chocolate because they weren't worried about the chocolate. They wanted the golden ticket. So finally, five people found those tickets, and those were the ones that got invited to go to tour the chocolate factory. And of course, the kids, some of them were not so nice and things happened, so you'll have to watch the movie. I won't describe all of it to you. But the point was is that they, there was a big invitation, and people were wanting to go, but he would only let five people come in. Today, I'm going to be talking about a, a story of a guy who wanted to invite his friend to come to a special place, and that place is where Jesus was going to be. And I want to, I want to be talking about how we as a church, and you even as boys and girls, can get involved into what we're going to be doing at our church, and that's inviting people. And the title's been Getting People to Jesus. And so I'm going to encourage the church, encourage you, that we can invite people to come to Jesus. And guess what? A whole lot more than five people can come. Anybody that wants to can come to Jesus. And that's the task we're going to have. That's the job God has given each one of us. Again, you as boys and girls, the same thing. That you can begin to bring people to Jesus. So I want you to listen really carefully to my message today. And these young ladies are going to give you a bulletin here in just a few moments. 
and uh, I want you to follow along. And inside there's some coloring sheets. I've got a picture of a guy, Nathaniel, under the fig tree. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about today, that guy and, and, his, and his friend named Philip. So I want you to uh, take a bulletin, and there's coloring sheets in there, but also for your older ones, the outline of my services there. And just like always, the word that fits in that blank will be underlined on my screen, okay? So you'll be able to know what word goes there. But I want you to remember that God has called all of us to invite, to encourage people to come to Jesus. And y'all get to be a part of that. And I hope that you'll, 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 you'll enjoy it and you'll get to have people coming to Jesus as well, okay? Because you're never too young to invite people, okay? All right, let me pray with you. And then you guys get these uh, bulletins from these ladies. And then you can go back to your seats, okay? Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've given us. And God, I thank you for these boys and girls that are down front with me here. And, and God, it's always exciting on the first Sundays of the month for me to get to sit here with them and talk to them for just a little bit. And God, I thank you that you even, can even involve them into doing what you've called our church to do. And that's getting people to Jesus, bringing them to you by inviting them to things and inviting them to our church. And so, Father, I pray that they would, uh, when they go to school or wherever they go, the Lord, they would begin to encourage their friends, talking to them about coming and being a part of, of what's going on at our church and maybe in, even in another church, Lord, as long as they're in church and they get to hear about Jesus. So, Father, I pray that you bless these kids, bless their parents and their families, and, Lord, just uh, continue to work through us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. If y'all would go ahead and get your bulletin from these two ladies. Watch them. All right. Just really, really having a great group of kids. Amen. And it's exciting to see this many down here. And so praise the Lord for them and for all that they, that you parents, thank you for getting them here to church. Amen. Getting people to Jesus. That's the task that God has given us. And as I shared with the kids, you're never too young and you're never too old to get to do that. Amen. We can be a part of that. Today, I want to look at a story about getting someone to Jesus that we've had over the last several weeks and we're going to continue to look on. I want you to take your Bibles to turn to the book of John, chapter 1. We're going to be starting at verse 43 and be reading through verse 49. John, chapter 1, starting at verse 43, reading through verse 49. Would you stand with me in honor of reading God's word this morning? It says here, the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of, the, of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and, and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called, to you, called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Father, we thank you. Thank you that you call us. Thank you that you save us. And Lord, that you have now called us to go and bring people to you. And God, I thank you for this year already and the number of people that have come to you through the ministries of this church and through the faithfulness of your people. And I pray, Father, for others that I know that you have already placed in our paths that we can reach them. And that, Father, we could be a church that is known for sharing Christ. And that, Father, you would speak to hearts this morning. I pray if there's anyone here or anyone listening or watching this live stream, that, Father, if they don't know who you are, if they've never had a relationship with you, that, Father, today would be that day. And that, Father, you would also encourage us who, who are your children Lord, you would encourage us to go find the one. And God, we just praise you for all you're doing and all you will continue to do. And I pray that the words I say today are not my words, but your words. 
I pray that this is not my message but yours. And I pray, Father, the response would be as you desire it. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. Today, my title of the message is Come and See. Come and See. That's what God has called for us to share out with people to just come and see. The thought that I have for you here is this. Every Christian has a story of coming to Christ, and it usually involves a person who's influenced us. Every one of us here, if you know Jesus somewhere along the line, it was somebody influencing you to go that direction that eventually led to you coming to Jesus. Mine, as I've shared in my testimonies before, were two of my teachers. I had two teachers that, that I, I know specifically that, that prayed for me and talked to me and encouraged me. And even in times that I had no desire for church, I had no desire for anything of God. I was not raised in a Christian home. I was raised in a good home, loving parents, but they were not Christians. We didn't have a Christian home. One of my brothers had, had, uh, had been saved early in his life and had already surrendered to the ministry, but that didn't mean anything to me. And so I was just going on through my life. But I, I know that those two teachers began to pray for me, and they, they talked to me, and they encouraged me, and, and, and they, they eventually invited me to a revival service. And it was through that revival service that I came to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. So all of you have a story somewhat like mine that somewhere along the way, somebody encouraged you. Somebody had an influence. And today, we're going to be looking at the influence of someone else. I want to look at two people, Philip and Nathaniel. Philip and Nathaniel were, were two guys, and they were two friends, and they were about to have an amazing encounter. The first thing I want us to look at here is that uh, Philip had found Jesus. He had Jesus in his heart. We see here in the very first verse that, that we see here that Jesus came to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. And Philip had that encounter with Jesus and turned his life over to him. He had a changed life. Amen. Jesus had literally changed him from being lost to being saved, from being condemned to now not having now for no condemnation. And so Philip had a life-changing experience through Jesus Christ. And that's what we may, must be having today, my friend. We must all have an encounter, a life-changing encounter. And not only had he changed life, but he wanted to share it. He had a new, fresh life, and he couldn't wait to go and share it with somebody. Amen? And that's what we ought to do. Listen, I shared with you last week about how we need to remember from where we were, that we were once lost. Remember what it was like to be lost. Remember the, the hurt and the pain, but then remember the joy of becoming to know Jesus. My friends, we need to remember that, amen? Because once we remember it, we'll want to share it. I couldn't wait that night that I received Jesus into my life there at First Baptist Church of Schulter, Oklahoma. Man, I ran home. I couldn't wait to tell mom and dad. Now, of course, they were encouraging. They weren't ecstatic over it, but they were encouraging I mean, I remember I went and ate pizza with the youth group. First time I'd ever been in a youth group in my life, amen. And we went to eat pizza. Praise the Lord. And I remember talking to the waitress. I mean, I had just gotten saved. And I remember the waitress coming around getting all of our drinks. There's a, a room full of a table, a couple of tables full of students. And man, I'm sitting there in the middle of them, and I'm this new guy. And and uh, this lady came by and said, what can you do? What can I do for you? And I said, I want something to drink. And I said, hey, I want to tell you something. I got saved tonight. Now she went, okay, next. But you know what? I was excited. I wanted to share something amazing had happened to me that night. And I couldn't wait to let people know. And so the same thing happened to Philip here. He had a life-changing experience with Jesus. He had a renewed life. He had a fresh life. And he couldn't wait to share it with somebody. My friends, listen to me. Might we all in here today, might everyone watching this today, have a desire to share what's gone on with them in your life. That you have had an encounter with Jesus. And man, we are excited. And we can't wait to let people know. So we see here that Philip had found Jesus. He had an encounter. Now listen, there's no reason for you to share about Jesus if you don't know him. You need to receive him, amen? So Philip had received him. Philip was now excited. And guess what? Nathaniel became Philip's one. I can imagine they were friends prior. And then all of a sudden, 
as he found uh, Jesus in his life and he had that encounter, I can't imagine that, that nothing less happened than all of a sudden Nathaniel came to his mind and he said, Woo! Man, I, this happened to me. I want to go find Nathaniel. Now what we find out is that he found him. We see in this text. And Philip found Nathaniel. You know what found means? He went looking for him. He found him because he was looking for him. He was looking for him because he came on his mind because he had just had an encounter with Jesus. Nathaniel now became his one. And folks, he went looking for him because he wanted to find this rascal. Amen? Guess what we are called to do? I shared with you a couple of weeks ago. We are to find the one that God has laid on our heart, and we are to, to realize who they are, and then we go looking for them. We go find them. So he had an encounter. Nathan, Nathaniel became his one, and so he went and he found him because he had gone looking for him. My friends, today we ought to be looking for our one. Wherever they are, we go looking for them. Don't wait and say, well, God, if you really want me to talk to them, you'll have them call me. Or if you really want them, if you, God, today, if you want them to talk to me, have them ring my doorbell in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. I guess not. Amen? He found him. It didn't say he found him immediately. So I don't know, did he go right to him and there he happened to be there? I don't know. Maybe he found, maybe he looked, maybe he looked, maybe he looked, and finally he found him. But we know that he became his one, and he looked and he found him. The second part is that an invitation was made. Here is where I really want to grasp a hold of everything that we're looking here in this text. He invited him to come. He invited him to come and be a part of this. Bringing begins with inviting. Folks, you can't bring somebody if you don't invite them. Bringing them to where Jesus is. Bringing them to where Jesus is being preached. Bringing them to where Jesus is being taught. But bring them, and first by inviting them and going to find who they are and encouraging them to come. A couple of things that I want us to look at. I found these texts by, uh, by, by, by Reverend Rayner, who is, is a writer through the Southern Baptist Convention. He says 43% of Americans are unchurched. Folks, that's, that's a big percentage, amen, of America. 43% of Americans are unchurched. You know what that means? That means 135 million people. Folks, that could fill this place up. 135 million people are unchurched. That means they really have no affiliation with any group. They're unchurched. But here's what else he found out. Tom Rainer found this out. 82% of the unchurched would likely attend if a friend, a family member, or co-worker invited them. That you would go and you would invite them. 83% of, the, of, of unchurched, this was them being interviewed. Yes, yeah, if, if a friend. Now, if you just walk up to a stranger on the street and say, Hey, would you come to church with me? They're probably going to say, I don't even know who you are. Probably not. But if you know them, if, if they're a family member, hey, would you come? We're having a special event at church. Why don't you come in? You're going to enjoy it. Why don't you come? Or you have a, 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 a friend that you've known for a long time. Hey, we, we got this going on, man. Things are really good. Hey, why don't you come and, come and join me tonight or today, next week? Or a co-worker, someone again that you've been around. It's, again, it's not just walking up cold and asking somebody to come to church. It's people you know every single day, you come in contact with every day. Listen, 83% of them said they would go if someone they knew really well would invite them. But here's the bad news. Only 2% of church members have invited an unchurched person to attend a service. Very few of us are going to the unchurched and even getting to know them to invite them to a church service or to a revival or to, or to a meal. Man, we have a lot of meals around First Baptist West, amen? We're having one tonight, Will Snacks, amen? If, you, if you've never been here to eat a Will Snack, I'm sorry. You should have been here. 
we're having them tonight. Will snacks, 5.30. Then, you get, then, of course, you have to stay for my Bible study. I mean, all right. It won't hurt your stomach, I promise. But are we inviting people? Are we literally going to them and saying, hey, would you come with me? I've known you for a long time, and it'd be, would you come and go with me? I think we'd probably be surprised with the answer. The Bible tells us in Luke 14, 23, then the master said to the servant, go out in the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house might be full. Go out and, 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 and listen to me. He's not talking to the preachers. Well, he is, but not only. He's not talking to the staff members. He's not talking to the Sunday school teachers. And he's not talking to the deacons only. He's talking to all of those who have had an encounter with Jesus, that our lives have been changed and the lives have been made new. He says, now I'm telling you as my servants to go out into the highways and the byways and hedges and compel them, beg them to come in. And you say, oh, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell them. Listen, do you know what, you know, I want you to hear Philip's testimony. Listen to all he said. Now Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him. We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. My life has been changed. I have an encounter with this guy. Man, I'm not the same guy I used to be. And he says, That's, that was his testimony. You notice he didn't have to learn any five-step program to be able to go through the, 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 the words with him. He didn't learn ten scriptures. He didn't, you know what he told him? I have had an encounter. I have found what I'm looking for. If you have Jesus in your heart, guess what? You found what you've been needing. And you know what people around you need to hear? That you found him. I found the one. I mean, you're empty, you're tired, you're hurting, you're lonely. You don't, you're confused, you don't know where to go. Hey, I found somebody that will help you. And his name is Jesus. And you know what else he said? Come see. Wow, what a testimony, amen? What an evangelistic tool that is. It was just merely telling somebody what Jesus had done for them, that they are convinced he's the Messiah. Now, come see. But now the thing I want you to understand, your invitation doesn't always produce the desired results. We're going to look at that here in just a second. And guess what? It might even the first time be disappointing. You might hear a No. You might not. You may be surprised to hear it, but you may hear or no. But you don't give up. As a matter of fact, when Philip talked to Nathaniel about coming, I want you to look at something. I want you to look at Nathaniel's response. <laughs> Nathaniel's response was, was pretty good. And Nathaniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? So in other words, he was skeptical. Amen? First of all, I don't know if anything good can come out of that place. <laughs> you know, and it's probably kind of a wise crack. Will anything good come out of there? Listen, do you know what you might hear when you invite your friend or your family member or your co-worker or your, your, your student that you sit next to in school and you invite them? You might hear something like this. Well, does anything good come out of church? <laughs> They're just nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. I know some of them, and they, they got all these things. Man, they get skeptical. Philip encountered skepticism when he invited his friend Nathaniel to come to see Jesus. He, he, he received that skeptic look. He is also critical. He ridiculed the claim by saying what he said. But do you know what the counter was to that? The counter to that was, come see. Come see. Hey, we're having revival services, man. We'd love for you to come. Oh, there's nothing good. Come out of revival services. Hey, just come see. I promise you, man, it, you, 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 you'll, you'll be impressed. Come to our church. 
You know, I, I tell people all the time, when we begin to advertise about revivals or special events, I tell you the best advertisement we can get is free, and that's your word of mouth. Do you know the best advertisement First Baptist West can get in Lawton is you telling people how good it is here. Do you know the worst advertisement you can give in Lawton? Tell people what's going on that you don't like here. And then go, oh, oh, by the way, come on, go to church with me. Oh, that church, they don't do anything I like, and their, their preacher doesn't do great, and I, we don't get to laugh much. And we don't. But hey, come on to church. They're going to go, are you kidding me? But man, if you say, look, man, are you tired? We got, we got some good stuff happening. We got our, our small groups, man, we got an amazing Sunday school teacher. We got an amazing, amazing deacon. We got, we got some good people. Man, we got a sweet fellowship down at First Baptist West. We got some good music. We got some good teaching going on. We got some good preaching going on. Hey, by the way, man, if you're needing something, come, come see. Well, I don't need that down there. there you go. Well, come see. But come try it. Come try it. You know, I used to use a tactic whenever I was youth pastor, youth director all those years. I'd invite some kids, to students to Falls Creek. And, you know, all the time kids, oh, I don't want to go to Falls Creek. I don't want to go. Here's what I'd promise. I'd say, here's what I want you to do. If you'll go to Falls Creek with me, and I promise you this, if you go to Falls Creek and you come home, and on Saturday morning when you get off our bus and you walk up to me and said, I hated it, I'm never going again. I said, here's what I'll do. I'll never ask you to go with us again. You know why I was saying that? Why I was saying that was because of this point right here. Jesus would produce the results. Amen? Because I promise you, if that kid went to Falls Creek, it wasn't going to be up to me now. It wasn't going to be up to me. Man, it's going to be up to the Holy Spirit. And I know the Holy Spirit's a whole lot better at this than I am. So if I can get someone to come to church, hey, you know what? Hey, just come see. And trust that the Holy Spirit is going to be the one to make the results happen. And not me and not you. you the, praise God, we're free of that. I'm not responsible. Listen, do you know the only thing I'm responsible for here this morning? It's to preach this message the best way I can, the way God told me to tell it, and to preach it as powerfully as I possibly can, emphasizing what I know God told me to emphasize, and that's it. Now, if, you know, if everybody walks out here today and you all go, whoa, that was awful. I'm not responsible for that. Amen? But here's the deal. If you begin to invite people and to bring them to Jesus... You're not responsible for how they respond when they get here. That's where you have to trust the Holy Spirit because Jesus produces the results. Here's the thing that I believe with all my heart. Jesus had been working on Nathaniel even before Nathaniel knew it. Case in point. And Nathaniel said to him, can anything good come out of, the, of Nazareth? Philip said to him, just come see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? I've never met you. I don't know who you are and you don't know who I am. And Jesus said to him, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, fig tree, I saw you. Oh, that's good news, amen. Jesus looked and said, there comes Nathanael, a good Israelite, and in him there is no guile, in him there is no deceit. Nathanael heard that and said, wait, how do you know me? And he said, hey, before I put you on Philip's heart, I saw you out over under the fig tree, and there I knew you. And there I began to work on you. And someone says, well, what, what's significant about the fig tree? In those times, what would happen if an, if an Israelite was going to spend time meditating and, and praying and, 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 and looking up Old Testament stuff or, or just you know, thinking about the things of God? A lot of times they would remove themselves away, and that's what Nathaniel had done. And it was there that God began to work 
on Nathanael, preparing him for Philip. When he called Philip and that relationship was right with God, then he sent Philip, now go talk to Nathanael because I've got him ready, and now you're bringing him to me. And that's where Jesus produced the result. I've said it to you last week. If he leads you to someone, he is already working on them. He will not lead you to someone he's not already working on. Now, they may tell you no, and they may give you all sorts of reasons, but the fact is, if, if he's laid them on you right now, or two weeks ago, or even last week, then he's preparing them for you. Even before he called you to go to them, he began to work on them, just like he did Nathaniel. Jesus is producing the results, my friends. All we're responsible for is doing what he's called us to do. Just go and ask them to come and see. And then step back and let Jesus do the work. You see who, who actually did the testimony? You actually see who did all the, all the hard work? All, all Nathaniel had to do was hear from Philip was just come see. Man, I, I, I got this experience. It's been amazing. You need to come. We know who, we know who the Messiah is now. He says, but nothing good comes. He said, just come see. My friend, today, that's what God may be calling you to do. Just go to them and tell them how good God is in your life. Just tell them how good God has touched you. Imagine hearing that from somebody that you care for, that they're telling you how good God has been to them. And then maybe with that one, say, would, would you come? Would, would, would you come and see? And we're having a great Bible study tonight. Why don't you come and see? You say you don't need it, but come and see. We got, we got great Bible studies on Wednesday. You say you don't need it. Well, well come see. Man, we're going we're gonna to do this next Sunday morning twice. 8 o'clock and 1045. Just come see. Do you see how easy... Evangelism can be, just come see. Today, I want to encourage you this as we close. I've been asking you for the last two weeks, who is your one? Last week I asked you, have you been praying for that one? Have you been going to that one? I'm going to ask you again, do you have that one? And maybe even somebody after the first service came and said, Pastor, I've got three. Boy, God's amazing. He gives to us above and beyond that which we ask. Amen. We ask for one. He gives us three. Woo! Okay. Have you been praying for that one? But if you're here today and you say, you know what, Pastor? I, I, I don't in my mind have even thought of a one. For some reason, I, I, it's just not there. Can I, can I warn you here? Maybe you're somebody else's one already. Philip could not go and would not go, could not think. He, this was not the first time he met Nathaniel. They had met. They were friends. Philip had never gone to him and talked to him about being the one because he was not the one because Philip had never had an encounter with Jesus. So today, if you sit here and you say, I don't have a one. I don't even have a, a desire to have a one. And I'm here to you today, tell you today, you may need Jesus yourself. Amen? Because he just told us, servants, go out, find them, compel them to come in. And if we don't have that, if I don't have that desire to, uh, to compel anyone and we don't have a one, maybe it's because we're somebody else's one. Maybe someone's already praying for you. Maybe you're here today. Maybe you're watching this video because today you're somebody's one. They've been praying for you. Maybe they told you, hey, come, come and see. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? They told you, just, just come see. Hey, go, go on live stream and just, just watch. Maybe today God's speaking to your heart, not about someone else, but maybe he's speaking to you about you needing to receive him in your personal life.
to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. You can do that. It's really simple. Just call on his name. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that he is the son of God. He is the only way, the truth, and the life, that no one can get to him, get to God except through him. That today you surrender your life over to him. You ask him to forgive you of your sin. You claim the blood of Jesus, and you claim his sacrifice, and you allow him to trade places with you. That's what you need to do today. Would you just call on his name? That's how simple it is. Would you come today? You can do that right there. Philip had the encounter. Then he had the desire. Maybe we're lacking desire. Because maybe we've lacked an encounter. But today you can solve that. But here you're saying, preacher, I know I, I, I've got one. Man, I've had them and I've been, I've been given every reason why I can't. But they won't get out of my mind. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray, God, help me find them. Help me remember how good it is to be saved. Help me know the hope that I have through Jesus Christ. Remind me of that today. So that I can ask them to come see. Come see. We have a couple hundred people in this room today. Over a couple hundred. That's a couple hundred ones that we need to be looking for. Would you do that today? I'd like you to bow your head as we now step into this time of invitation. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want to encourage you this morning, right there where you are, if you're in this congregation or if you're at home, or you're wherever you are watching this, I want to encourage you today, come to Jesus right now. Man, you just have to call on his name and let him change your life. Because I'm telling you, if he's calling you today, you were somebody else's one. Somebody has been visiting with you. Somebody's been praying for you. Would you come this morning? Would you surrender your life to him? Would you do that today? We have people down front that want to help you if you need us. But if you don't, you can just do it right there where you are. You can do it yourself. But come to Jesus. Come and see for yourself. Taste and see that God is good. But maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I know, I know I have Jesus. Man, I want to be reminded of how good it is to have him. I want to, I want, I want to be reminded what it is like to not have him. And how he changed my life so that I can be encouraged. Because God's been placing on my heart this person. And I need, I, I need to find them. Oh, would you commit to that today? And just have them come see. Maybe there's students that you go to class with. Maybe there's, there's friends. Maybe there's coworkers that God's been asking you just to invite them to, to come here and see. Come here to hear what's going on. You don't have to do all the work. Just ask them to come see. To find an unchurched individual. And just invite them. Father, hear us today. Hear our words. Hear our hearts. Hear our prayers. And Father, if there's someone here that needs you, Lord, let them call on you this morning. Let them call out to you and receive you into their lives whether here or on the live stream, let them call out to you today. And Father, encourage us as your people to go to the highways and the byways, compel people to come in, that your table could be full, that this place could be full. God, let that begin right here, right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to ask you to stand. We're going to sing.
I'm Harold Gacious, pastor of First Baptist West. I want to thank you for watching our service today and hope that you were able to feel the God's Spirit moving as we were able to here. And I want to always invite you to join us in person. If you're within driving distance, come and join us and we can worship together. But if not, continue to watch us in our live stream service as we will now, over the next few weeks, continue to be preaching on bringing people to Jesus. Our goal is to make the church aware of the need that people have around us uh, for, for Jesus. And so that our hope is to bring people to that saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are needing anything that we can help you with, just please call us here at the church office, and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to visit with you in any way that we can, help you in any way that we can. So we always want to welcome you and be a, be a loving church. And remember, at First Baptist West, we're people that love God, love people, and we want to see lives changed.